The date is 2001, and in the Australian outback, a 64-meter radio telescope scans the sky for electromagnetic signals from deep space. With most of the electromagnetic energy in the universe being generated by stars and black holes, and outside of the visible light spectrum, the radio dish and the data it collects as it steadfastly surveys the sky is instrumental in making new discoveries about phenomena millions of light years away. Unbeknownst to its operators and buried deep in the incoming data, the dish picks up a powerful 5 millisecond burst of radio energy, something unlike any observed cosmic phenomenon to date. The burst of incredibly powerful radio energy will remain buried in the data for another six years though, until in 2007 astronomer Duncan Lorimer assigns a student to look through the archival data from over half a decade ago. Stumbling across the mysterious transmission, it's first believed to be a technical glitch. But slowly, Lorimer and his student realize that this is in fact exactly what it appears to be, a massively powerful radio signal coming from somewhere in space outside our galaxy. The rest of the astrophysics community largely discounts what comes to be known as the Lorimer Pulse though, assuming it to be faulty equipment or an inappropriately observed commonplace phenomenon. Then, in 2010, a survey involving many different radio dishes around the world picks up 16 pulses, now known as fast radio bursts. Immediately, heated debate begins among scientists, even as more FRBs are discovered year by year. Theories range from the incredibly unlikely neutron stars caught in a specific set of circumstances near a black hole to the flat-out incredible alien communications. Yet FRBs proved elusive and would never repeat themselves, leaving scientists completely in the dark as to their true origin. Then, in 2016, scientists working at the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia and working with the Breakthrough Listen initiative make a startling discovery. The Breakthrough Listen project is aimed at detecting signs of intelligent life via eavesdropping on the universe at large within a variety of different radio frequencies. With the correct frequency that an alien civilization may be broadcasting in impossible to guess, Breakthrough hopes to use computers to scan through enough frequencies fast enough to catch rare one-off transmissions that might just be coming from a technological civilization. Then, suddenly, late one night on August 26th, astronomers pick up an incredibly powerful radio signal coming from deep space. The energy of the signal is so great that a natural origin is all but impossible, and so the astronomers turn all their electronic ears on the source of the transmission. For the next five hours, radio telescopes pick up a further 15 bursts of intense radio energy, all coming from the same spot in the sky. The scientists end up collecting a whopping 400 terabytes of data. Never before had scientists detected repeating FRBs, and the discovery of a repeating FRB throws out a great deal of theories for a natural origin. Stopping well short of announcing the discovery of alien intelligence, scientists are still forced to seriously consider that the repeating transmissions cannot be of natural origin. One natural theory put forward though, claiming that the FRBs could be coming from a newly formed magnetar, a very quickly spinning neutron star with an extremely powerful magnetic field. While plausible, the theory fails to explain why the transmission only lasted for five hours though. Other theories are presented as well, and most involve incredibly specific circumstances affecting very rare cosmic phenomena. Given the size and the age of the universe, these extremely low probability theories are not truly impossible but are implausible. Slowly though, more and more scientists come around to the possibility that the FRBs are not natural in origin and are in fact signs of advanced intelligent life. To discover the plausibility of an alien origin, astrophysicists first calculated just how much energy would be needed to send a signal as powerful as an FRB all the way across galaxies. What they found is that by building an extensive network of solar arrays twice the surface area of the Earth around a star similar in size to our Sun, they could provide enough power to send such powerful transmissions across the universe. Such a construction is far beyond the bounds of what would be feasible for us humans. But what about advanced aliens? Well, if aliens really wanted to build such a mega structure, it would actually turn out to be relatively easy and really only require a very large investment in time. First, the aliens would build a set of pre-programmed von Neumann drones and launch them at the moons of neighboring planets or an asteroid belt if they had one. Von Neumann drones are hypothetical but completely plausible autonomous robots, which would be programmed to turn raw materials into copies of themselves. The replication process of a small fleet of von Neumann robots would be so efficient that in fact it's estimated that a single species could scout the entire galaxy in only a few tens of thousands of years by sending out probes that arrive at a star system, replicate, and then launch off to new stars 
star systems. In our scenario, though, our drones will first spend a decade breaking down the raw materials of asteroids or a moon and processing them into new drones, creating a fully autonomous workforce of millions of drones in just a few years. Once the workforce is created, the drones would then turn to the process of assembling the giant solar dishes required to power the huge transmitter. For decades, the robots would mine raw materials, refine them, and transport them for assembly in space, all without interference from the aliens who built them. The aliens could literally kick up their feet and relax as their vast swarm of drones slowly but surely constructs a massive radio dish and solar power collectors in space outside their planet. Within a few decades to a century, the project would be complete, with the drones then breaking themselves down to use their own bodies as the final raw materials needed. Now that would be recycling on a galactic scale. With the huge radio dish and the solar collectors needed to power it completed though, the question is what exactly would aliens want to do with it? Well, here on Earth, we have for a long time known of a way to propel spacecraft incredible distances at speeds approaching a significant fraction of the speed of light. Typically, these propulsion systems involve a large array of powerful radio antennas or laser emitters built onto the surface of the Earth or in space, which would then fire microwaves or pulses of laser light at the rear end of a spaceship. With no friction in space to slow down a spacecraft, the tiny push of radio energy or photons on the hull of the ship would quickly add up and could propel a ship 20 times the size of a modern cruise liner to speeds that would make reaching nearby star systems a matter of years. An advanced alien civilization could thus use an array of huge radio transmitters to push spacecraft along electromagnetic interstellar highways, and with a powerful enough transmitter, they could even propel spacecraft across intergalactic distances. With a star powering the transmitter, the spacecraft could be powered for years, decades, or even longer if necessary, and the extremely high energy state of FRBs could make such a propulsion system effective even across intergalactic distances. The only limitation would be the biological needs of the ship's crew, but if an alien civilization civilization is advanced enough, even that would be of little concern, as they might simply put their crew into stasis that lasts for hundreds or even thousands of years. The alien propulsion hypothesis would even fit in with the fact that the FRBs are almost never observed repeating. This is because a giant transmitter near an alien world would itself be orbiting its host star, while that star orbited around the galactic core of its home galaxy, and that galaxy itself moved relative to other galaxies around it. This means that we would only be able to detect an FRB during the very rare and very short-lived moments that the beam of the transmitter crossed paths with the Earth. Of course, FRBs can also be used for signaling to other alien life and not just to push ships around space. Given their extremely high energy state and lack of similarity to any observed or easily explainable natural phenomenon, FRBs could be nothing more than something similar to shining a very bright flashlight in the middle of a forest, hoping that someone outside the forest is looking in your direction and noticing the bright flash of light. The key would be to make sure that the pulses are repeatable over a shorter duration. That way, an alien civilization who detects them would have a very hard time explaining them as having a natural origin, which is exactly the case with our current observations of FRBs. With such a vast universe, though, it would be extremely unlikely that the Earth would be in the direct path of a series of FRB pulses, and much like in the scenario earlier where they're being used to push alien spaceships along, we would only detect them by accident when the beam crosses our path. However, if an alien civilization was actively transmitting throughout space, then eventually the Earth would be in the direct path of a set of pulses, exactly as happened in 2016. Given the size of the universe, it's very likely that many civilizations would all have the same idea for intergalactic communication with other species, and thus our detection of so many FRBs could be a tiny percentage of what is essentially a huge intergalactic conversation of which we've yet to take part. Of course, FRBs could also end up being nothing more than another weird astronomical phenomenon that we don't quite understand yet. Our top scientists here at the Infographics Show, though, can confirm that FRBs are definitely not transmissions from Zeti Reticuli aliens, who are definitely not coming, and they're definitely not already here, to eat your delicious brains. What do you think FRBs are? Do you think we'll ever find intelligent life? Let us know in the comments, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.